Protectors of the Suna Suna Baba Protector of the Suna Ina Laham Duty La Wasala Wasalam Allah Wa Rasulallah. Welcome to another session of Sunnah Followers Hadith class. And this is the class wherein we are discussing the hadiths uh, taken from the book entitled Once Upon a Time. And this is a series of hadiths, uh, a series of hadiths which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shared with us stories of what, the, what happened to the people who came before us, stories that we can learn and benefit from. And the book is now available for purchase on his website. So you want to go to sooner follow, I mean, go to atleonline.com, click on the book once upon a time, and that's where you will find all these wonderful, wonderful hadiths. And let's put the hadith that's up for discussion today on the screen. And this hadith is entitled the test, the test. Today in our, um, uh, um, today in our tall he class, we spoke about the angels and how uh, the relationship that they have with us humans. And we talked about how one of the relationships that the angels have with us is that sometimes Allah will, will send them to test us, to test us to see where we are in our faith, to see where we are in our belief in him. Okay, so this is something, another purpose uh, that the angels serve, you know, of, as of testing us Muslims to see, you know, just how strong we are in our faith. And the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam shared with us the story of some of these tests. For example, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us the story as to how Allah decided to test a man who suffered with leprosy. Leprosy was a skin disease that disfigured you. And also a man who was blind. And also a, pick that up a blind, a bald-headed man. You know, Allah decided to send an angel to test them, to see how they were in their faith. Because one of the things, when we look at ourselves and see that we are lacking, we always say, oh, if only I had this, or if only I had that, or if only my life consisted of this, oh, I would do this and I would do that. If I were a rich man, diddy, 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 diddy. And then when Allah give you money, you prove to be a miser, a, sting, a stingy miser, you know? So this is, you know, the same that happened here. So Allah sent an angel in the disguise of a handsome man to test these three men who lived in the same village, just to see, because they constantly complained about, if only I had beautiful uh, appearance. So the angel went to the leper first, and he said to him, and he didn't know that this man was an angel, because remember, the angels take on the appearance of a human being. And he came to him and said, uh, uh, what if you could have one wish in the world, what would you desire? And the man said, oh, I would wish to have good skin and good color because I'm suffering with leprosy. And the people, when they see me, they run away from me. If only my skin was normal, my color, my skin color was normal and the people wouldn't run from me if I were a rich man. That same scenario. OK, so after the man told him what his wish was, the angel then touched him. And his sickness went away and his skin was transformed into that skin that was beautiful. And his appearance was of, as of a regular handsome man. 
And so the, the angel then asked him, so now that you have been given this wish, if you had property, what would you desire your property to be? The man said, oh, if I were a rich man, I'd want camels. So the leper gave him a pregnant female camel and said, here is a pregnant female camel. May Allah bless you in this. And then the handsome man, which was an angel in disguise, walked away. Okay. And then this angel in disguise continued through the village until he entered upon the bald headed man. And he asked the bald headed man, if you could have anything in the world, what would you wish for? The bald headed man said, Oh, I would wish for hair. I would wish to be cured of this bald disease because when the people look at me, you know, they complain about how bald and patchy my head is. So once again, the angel touched him and the man's baldness was replaced with a beautiful full set of hair. And then the angel asked him, if you owned property, which property would you desire to have? And the man said, oh, I would love to have cows, to raise cows. So the angel brought forth to him a pregnant female cow and said, may Allah bless you in this. And then the angel continued on through the village. He continued on until he came upon the blind man. And he asked the blind man, if you could have any wish you desire, what would you wish for? The blind man said, I would wish that Allah would return my eyesight to me so that I could see the people to be able to see that what could be better than that. So the angel touched his face and Allah gave the man back his eyesight. And then the angel asked him, and if you could have property, what kind of property would you wish to have? And the, the man said, sheep. Oh, the th things I could do if I could grow and raise sheep. So the angel gave him a pregnant female sheep. And then the angel left. And the whole village was surprised to see what happened to these three men. These three men who were once a blind man, who was once a bald man, who was once a man with leprosy, they now have been restored to beautiful physiques. And their, their camel, their cows, their sheep gave birth. And you know what happens? They had more and more flocks and herds. So soon the first man had a valley full of camels. The second man had a valley full of cows. And the third man had a valley full of sheep. They became rich and wealthy. You know, we always say, if only I could be rich or if only I had this, what I, I would do that and all that. Well, here is the test. Allah told the angel, I want you to go back and I want you to test those three men to see what will they do now. So the angel obeyed his Lord and took on the form of a leper. And he went to the man who used to be a leper. And he said, I am a poor man. I have no money. I've been traveling. And my only means of reaching my destination is through Allah and you. So please, for the, by the one who gave you beautiful skin and the one who gave you all this property, can you please just give me one camel that I can ride to my destination? The man who used to be a leper looked at the angel in disguise. He said, I can't offer you anything because I have bills to pay. I got like, I got to pay my bills. I have many debts. If I gave to you, it's going to take away from me. And then the angel in disguise looked at him and said, but I know who you are. I know who you were. Didn't you? Not too long ago, used to be a leper whom the people found gross. And weren't you poor? And the man said, yeah, well, guess what? I inherited this property through my family. So that ain't true. The angel said, well, if this is not true, if you are telling Allah, then may Allah return you back to the condition you were in before he blessed you. If you're telling, if you're not, uh, uh, if you are lying. 
And then the angel went away and took on the appearance of a bald man. And he went to the man who used to be bald. And he said to him, oh, please help me. I'm a bald man and, and I need some transportation. You know, can you please offer me a, a cow or something that can help me on my journey? And again, this man refused too. And again, the angel said, but didn't you used to be poor? Didn't you used to be bald and have no friends? The man said, that ain't true. I got received my inheritance through my family. I ain't never been bald. I ain't never been poor. So the angel told him, then if you are telling a lie, may Allah return you to your former condition. And then he continued on his way. And he finally came to the last man who used to be blind. The angel took on the appearance of a blind man and went to him and said, hey, sir, I am a poor traveler and my money has been exhausted. And the only means of reaching transportation is through a law and you, can you please offer me, you know, a sheep so I can get to the end of my journey? The man who used to be blind looked at him and said, oh yes, I used to be blind too. He said, but Allah gave me back my eyesight and Allah blessed me with this wealth I have. Mm -hmm. So take whatever you need, however much you, you need and don't, don't hesitate in any of it. And I swear by Allah that I will not argue with you about anything you take because I'm giving it to you for the sake of Allah. And that's when the angel uh, stood up and he opened his eyes and he said, I am not blind. He said, I am an angel sent by your Lord to test you and your other friends. He said, keep your property. He said, you have all been put to a test and of all of you, Allah is only pleased with you. So keep your property. But for as for your companions, they will lose everything that they had. And sure enough, you know, Allah restored the man who used to be a leper back to a leper. He restored the, uh, the bald man back to being bald and took all their flocks and wealth away. So this is a wonderful story mm -hmm. that brings about a great lesson for any of us who truly believe in Allah. Be careful what you wish for. And this is something that I've been teaching you guys as a, as a diet for the past 30 years. Be careful saying if only I was rich and I wish I had this and I wish I had that. Because if you had those things, you wouldn't know how to, ha what, how to handle yourself in it anyway. Money, beauty, these things change people. They've changed people ever since the law created Adam and Eve. So be careful of what we wish for. And remember, life is a circle. You know, what goes around comes around. You know, you never want to forget where you came from. That's another lesson here. A lot of Muslims, we start off, we come from the wrong side of the tracks or a hard lifestyle. Allah bless us with a good husband, a good wife and good children, and we move up, but we forget, we forget where we came from and the struggles we had to endure. And then when others, even family members, when others, even family members come to ask you for help, instead of you just no questions asked, giving them the help, you wanna question them, interrogate them. So this is a wonderful, wonderful lesson to be learned from this wonderful story. Uh, what would you guys uh, like to say? Anyone would like to have any comments to make about this wonderful hadith? Any comments? Okay, I'd like to thank everybody for joining and participating in this session of our hadith class. Uh, <laughs> Make sure that everybody is here tomorrow. I will try to do my hadith, my uh, Tawhi class on the angels at six. And we'll try to keep this class like we're doing today at 11. Thank mm -hmm. you for participating. Supana kala huma wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Astakdaruka wa atubu ilaik.